In the previous video, I introduced the hyperbola. We really focused on what the standard form of the equation was, what it looked like, and how A and Q impacted the graph. We also learned how to draw a hyperbola. Now in this video, we're gonna move on to the next step, which is finding the equation of the hyperbola. This could be if they give us some words, or if they actually draw a hyperbola and tell us to find the equation from that. So let's just recap a little bit. A hyperbola has a standard form of y equals a over x plus q. Now remember, in grade 10, if you have any sort of function where the x is at the bottom of the fraction, then it's going to be a hyperbola. Now, when it comes to finding the equation of a hyperbola, sometimes people want to find all of the unknowns. But remember, an equation of a function should have x and y as the only unknowns or the only variables. That means that if we can find the other variables, a and q, we've actually found the equation for the entire hyperbola. There's two different ways that they can ask you to find the equation for a hyperbola. First case is when they give you the horizontal asymptote and one other point. Now, before we actually move on to that, what I wanna remind you of is A tells us the shape of the graph, just like it has in the parabola. And Q tells us the vertical shift in the graph, just like it did in the parabola. But what's unique about the value of Q in the hyperbola, if you remember from the previous video, is that it also tells us the horizontal asymptote. Now, if you're struggling to remember what exactly an asymptote is, I strongly recommend you go back through the previous video and just remind yourself. But as a very brief reminder, we're going to say that an asymptote is a line, a straight line, that the graph approaches or gets very, very close to, but never actually touches. Okay, so just keep that in the back of your mind. That Q also represents the horizontal asymptote. So let's jump straight into example one. Determine the equation of the hyperbola with the horizontal asymptote at negative five and passing through the point one, four. Okay, so you'll see here that they've told us the horizontal asymptote at negative five in words. I'm hoping you remember that horizontal, like the horizon, is across. And when we have a line that is horizontal, I'm really hoping you remember from the last video and from the special straight line graph, that that means it'll be y equals a number, and what will it equal? Negative five. So they gave it to us in words, and we're putting it into mathematics. And it also passes through the point one, four. Okay, cool. So let's see what we can do with this information. Just like I said up here, the Q will tell us the horizontal asymptote, which means if we're given the horizontal asymptote, that must be the value of Q. So that's a pretty good start. Now all we have to do is find A. Here's something really important for you guys to realize. We have two unknowns to find, A and Q. And anytime you have two unknowns, they have to give you two pieces of information. So you'll notice here they've given us a horizontal asymptote and a point. Now, we've already used this horizontal asymptote, but we haven't used this other information they've given us. So we're probably going to need it for the next step. Spoiler, we are. Okay, so now we have that the equation is currently instead of a over x plus q, it's now y equals a over x minus five, because I know what q actually is. So let's use this piece of information and see if it helps us. Let's substitute in the point one, four. A reminder that subst is a perfectly acceptable abbreviation for substitute in mathematics. Now, if you remember, the, now if you remember, coordinates are given in the form x, y, meaning that the x value here is one and the y value is four. So let's substitute that into our equation. Wherever I see a y, I'll put down four, and then I'm gonna say a, over wherever I see an x, I'm going to put a 1 minus 5. Okay, so let's simplify this a bit. Anything divided by 1 is itself, so we can leave that at that. Now I want to get the a by itself, so I'm going to move this dude over. It's going to become 4 plus 5 equals a. So 4 plus 5 is 9. 
Now, I don't know if you guys are like me, but sometimes my A's start to look a lot like a nine. I mean, have a look at this one. That can look a lot like a nine. So when you have a nine and an A in the same problem, make sure that they look different so that you don't confuse yourself. See how I've made this nice and long so it doesn't look like my A. Okay, awesome. So now I've found my Q and I've found my A value. That means we're done, right? Well, not quite. Remember, this question wanted us to determine the equation. We haven't really written down what the equation is. So always make sure that you answer the question and actually write down the equation. So it's y equals 9 over x minus 5. See, we need to make it look different from our a. So my response is just to give it a really long leg. So let's actually have a look at this graph. Here you can see the actual graph of y equals 9 over x minus 5. You'll see I've made sure to plot my asymptotes of y equals negative 5. That's this dotted line over here. Now let's just double check. It said that it went through the point 1, 4. So here's where x is 1 and I go up to 4. Yep, there it is. Okay, so this is just for you to visualize the graph. You'll notice that because a was positive, we're looking top right bottom left. Alrighty, so let's carry on. Okay, so we've gone through example one and we've had a good look at it. Let's try example two. Here it says, determine the equation of the hyperbola passing through the point negative two, four with an asymptote of y equals two. Ah, oh, that looks much nicer than the previous one. We know now that if y is equal to two, then q must also equal to two. So actually our equation so far is y equals a over x plus 2. So that's a positive. Okay, we could have even put there a little plus. So now we've used one piece of information, but we've still got this other piece of information. So let's use it. Let's substitute the point negative 2, 4. Okay, dokie, artichokies. Let's remember that negative 2 is the x value and 4 is the y value. So if we substitute this into the equation, instead of a y, I'll write a 4 equals a, because I still don't know what a is. And instead of an x, I'll write negative 2 plus 2. So now maybe this starts looking a little bit more complicated, so bear with me. We want to get a on its own. At the moment, it's still attached to something. It's a divided by 2. So let's move this guy over first so that we can isolate a over negative 2. So that'll be 4 minus 2 is equal to a over negative 2. 4 minus 2 is 2, so there we go, a over negative 2. Another way we can read this side is a divided by negative 2. So if we want to get the a by itself, we need to do the opposite of what's happening here. So it's currently a divided by negative 2, so we're going to times by negative 2. But what we do on one side, we do on both sides. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, and here we're going to say a divided by negative 2 times by negative 2 will get us an A just by itself. So there we go. Now we've got our Q and we've got an RA. So we need to remember that the question asked us to find the equation. So before we move on to the next question, let's write down the equation. It's going to be Y equals negative 4 over X plus 2. Let's have a look at the actual graph. Okay, so here we can see the graph y equals negative 4 over x plus 2. You can see that I've also made sure to put in the asymptotes again with the dotted line at y equals 2. So instead of being shifted down like the previous one was, this one has been shifted up two units. Additionally, because a is negative now, a is negative 4, we can see that it is now, instead of being in the top right and bottom left quadrant, it's in top left, bottom right. Okay. Now let's just check a couple of things. We were given the point negative two, four. Let's just double check that it actually appears on our graph. So we're gonna go negative two and up one, two, three, four. Yep, there it is. Okay, so there's a good visualization of what that graph actually looks like. Do you need to draw it? No, absolutely not. The question was only for you to find the equation. I just wanted to show you what it looks like, just so that you could start getting a better sense of what it looks like on the graph when the a values and q values are either positive or negative. So that's case one when we were given the horizontal asymptote and a specific point. Now let's talk about case two, where we're given any two points. Hmm, let's see how it goes. 
Example three says, determine the equation of the hyperbola passing through the points negative nine, negative one over three, and three, one. Remember, we still have two unknowns, Q and A, so they have to give us two pieces of information. Now, the problem with this one is none of these is telling me the horizontal asymptote. So we can't really approach it the same way. There's no way that I can just suddenly see what Q is. So let's see what we can do. Well, I know when I'm given a point, I can try and substitute it. So let's say substitute this point negative nine and negative a third into the equation. Now the equation, I hope you remember, is just y equals a over x plus q. Wherever I see an x, I'll replace it with a negative nine, and wherever I see a y, I'll replace it with a negative one over three. So here I'm gonna say negative one over three is equal to a over negative nine. Ooh, there's that pesky a and nine combo again, plus q. I'm just going to point something else out. Normally, when I write the Q, I write it like that. So I would write quarter like that. Do you notice that when I'm writing it, normally, no little tail. When I'm writing it in an equation, I always put a little tail because you do not want a Q to look like a nine by accident. Sometimes numbers and letters can look really similar if we're not paying attention. Okay. So cool, except I've got a lot of fractions here and mm, I'm not really keen on too many fractions. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of the fractions. I'm going to multiply by this denominator. So I'm going to multiply absolutely everything by negative nine. So if you want to, you can use your calculator if you're not comfortable. But I'm going to say negative nine times negative one over three, hmm, that'll give me three. A divided by negative nine times negative nine, that'll just be A. And then Q times negative nine will be negative nine Q. Okay, so still got two unknowns. Hmm, let's just label this number one. Now let's just try with the other piece of information. So let's over here substitute the point three one. Okay, so now wherever I see an X, it'll be a three. Wherever I see a Y, it'll be a one. So going back to the original equation, we'll say one is equal to A over three plus q. And again, I'm not really super keen on fractions, so I'm going to multiply right through by three. But if I multiply right through, I must multiply everything. So one times three is three. A over three times three, it will just be a. And q times three will be three q. Again, still two unknowns, and it might feel like now, what on earth do you do? But I'm hoping that you guys recall simultaneous you can do this using substitution, you can do it using elimination, whatever you prefer. I'm going to tell you that I prefer elimination for these graphs specifically because if I subtract number one from number two or number two from number one, I'll be able to say A minus A, which will give me zero, which will get rid of one of the variables, which is really helpful. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, let's see it in action. Let me say equation one minus equation two. So I'm going to write equation one here. I'm going to be super careful with these a's and these q's and these nines. I'm going to say now I'm going to subtract the second equation, which is three equals a plus three q. I'm just going to say what will this equal? Well, three minus three will be zero. Pop down my equals. a minus a will be zero. Negative nine q minus 3q will give me negative 12q. So from this, I can say that negative 12q is equal to zero, which must mean that q is equal to zero. Okay, so now we have a q value. What about substituting this q value into one of these equations? So substitute q equals zero into I'm just going to go straight for equation one, but really it's up to you. Three is equal to a minus nine times zero. So three is equal to a. Cool. Now I've got my q value and I've got my a value. So let's write down the equation. We've got y is equal to three over x plus zero. Hmm. We don't really have to write this, so we can just say y is equal to 3 
over x. And there you go. You just found the equation for our hyperbola when there were two points given. Let's take a look at what this graph actually looks like. So here we can see y equals 3 over x. Now, why didn't I put any asymptotes in there? Well, because the axes are the asymptotes here. Q is equal to 0, so the line y equals 0, which is the x-axis, is the asymptote. So now that we've found these equations and we've seen what they look like, let's just recap the two cases that we can get. The first is we're given the horizontal asymptote and one other point. This one is my personal favorite because it just feels easier. Here, we know that the horizontal asymptote is the Q value, and then we substitute the additional point to find our A value. Then, the second case is where they give us two different points. There, we substitute the first point, come up with one equation, substitute the second point, come up with another equation, and solve simultaneously. Okay, guys, that's it. Now it's your turn to practice.